Hey everyone, a while ago I talked about why the Wii U is a good console to start collecting for, uh, so I thought why not talk about some others as well. So today the focus will be on the Sony PlayStation Portable, also known as the PSP, Sony's first handheld console. The handheld came out uh, back in uh, 2005. I remember the excitement around this thing back when I was in high school. People were excited about all the things uh, it could do. It was a console that was going to have graphics almost as good as the PS2. It was going to play music and even movies. This was in uh, 2005, remember. Back then, uh, phones looked like this, and YouTube just started, so nobody even knew what that was. And the video iPod came out in October of that year. Video on a handheld device? That's crazy talk. Just the thought of having a device that could browse the internet, play video games, and play music and videos was amazing. Here was a device that promised everything you wanted to do, on the go, all in one place. But of course, we know how all of that turned out. These days, most people use smartphones, and all of these previously mentioned features don't need to be on a handheld game console. Which means that PSPs are cheap now. There's some great games available for the system, and it's relatively plentiful, so it's a great console to collect for, not to mention it's very easily modded. In terms of hardware, there are five different PSPs to choose from. The original PSP is often referred to as the PSP 1000, or the fat PSP. The second one is called the PSP 2000, which is lighter and slimmer and features a component video out port. It also has a nicer screen and reduced loading times. The PSP 3000 added a few more interesting bits and bobs. The screen has a much faster response time, so less ghosting, and the uh, contrast is higher, and the color range is also much better. A microphone was added too, but no one really cares about that. Despite the uh, PSP 3000 having interlacing issues with the screen, I think the faster response time makes this the best of the three, though there are a lot of people who just can't deal with the uh, interlacing effect. There's also the PSP Go, which can't play physical games at all, and features a slightly smaller screen. If you're going to mod your PSP, then this one might be a good option, actually. And uh, lastly, there's the PSP Street, which is a stripped-down budget version of the PSP 3000. No real reason to go and get that one, since it only has a mono speaker and no Wi-Fi. Personally, I would go for the PSP 2000 or 3000. Uh, and I did, actually. The blue one here is a 2000, and the silver is a 3000. Prices are all over the place on eBay. Uh, but I've seen reasonable examples running anywhere between uh, 30 to $60 in various pawn shops. Make sure you get the charging cable as well. A lot of the old PSPs were backpack warriors, so you'll come across some battered ones with broken or missing battery doors and uh, tons of uh, scratches on them as well. Batteries are another area of concern. Be prepared to uh, buy a replacement battery as originals are most likely not going to be holding much of a charge. I've got an extended battery for the uh, 3000, which is why it looks like it has a tumor. There's a good variety of games available, and most aren't all that pricey. Just type in Best PSP Games into Google, and that should get you started. My favorite game on the PSP is Valkyria Chronicles 2. I bought my PSP just to play that. Grand Theft Auto, Gran Turismo, Monster Hunter, uh, Final Fantasy, Disgaea, the list goes on. I think the game library is big enough to have something for most gamers out there. If that's not enough, you can mod the PSP really easily. Now just throw some custom firmware onto the memory stick, thanks Sony. Now you can just place PSP game ROMs right onto the memory stick so you don't have to listen to the UMD drive make a racket every 5 seconds. Makes it really easy to download and try out various games. And fan translated games like Valkyria Chronicles 3 are now also playable with a modded PSP, which is really cool. You can load up uh, things like emulators and other homebrew stuff as well, so there's tons of stuff to play around with. And uh, there are even uh, movies released on UMD. Not really useful, but it's funny to think that Sony thought that this was a good idea. Movies aren't that expensive, so it might be worth uh, picking up a few just for the novelty factor alone. Kind of like, you know, the whole HD DVD thing there with the Xbox 360. While it's easy to pick on the PSP's quirks, like the UMD movies, or just the UMD thing in general, or those stupid Sony memory sticks, or the fact that the PSP Go can't play physical games, 
the uh, PSP was Nintendo's first real competitor when it comes to handheld consoles. This was a real effort by Sony to dethrone Nintendo as the king of portable gaming. Sony managed to beat Nintendo with their PlayStation back in the 90s, but as we all know now, this didn't quite happen with the PSP. Uh, the might of Pokemon was a little too hard to go up against, I think. But it was a worthy effort and resulted in great hardware and games. So, the next time you see a PSP sitting around on your local pawn shop's shelf, consider giving it a second look. <laughs>